Easter. Happy <laughs> Easter. <laughs> Let's try Happy Thanksgiving. I was just thinking to myself, don't say good morning, Mandel. And Happy Easter came out. I'm ready for this whole thing to be over. We'll be in next spring. It's good to see you all on this rainy evening. That's okay. You know, when it's beautiful outside, I say the Lord has blessed us with, with beautiful weather. And when it's raining outside, the Lord has blessed us with the gift of rain and is sending his rain upon a thirsty earth. Whatever it's doing, it's good to gather together with you all. And welcome to those of you who are streaming this worship service uh, from home. God bless you. I love the Thanksgiving Eve service. I think it's a wonderful time to just stop and uh, give thanks. Things are about to get hectic as we move in, as we move closer and closer to Christmas. And it's good. It's good to pause and observe this joyful time and to give thanks. We have lots to give thanks about. I was thinking just a few moments ago uh, that I received an email from Kent Schwartz, uh, I don't know, a week or two ago. And his email said that, um, jokingly said, 
that at Thanksgiving time, we're going to be limited to six guests in our home because of the pandemic. But for a funeral service, you are allowed up to 30. So therefore, as email said, uh, we will be holding uh, a funeral for our dearly departed pet turkey. And in lieu of flowers, you're welcome to bring a side dish or a dessert. <laughs> well, that's a great way to get started. Um, to give thanks for a little bit of levity. Well, God bless you. Welcome. Good to see you all. Uh, are there, wait, I don't have any announcements planned. Is there anything that, uh, any other announcements that ought to be made? I don't think. Don't forget our Christmas pageant. That will be December 13th at 6 o'clock. Other than that, it's pretty, uh, uh, pretty low key in the life of the church right now, and intentionally so, as the numbers rise, we are trying to be careful, and uh, we're keeping an, an eye on the on the horizon. And so, uh, do stay well, stay healthy, and stay safe uh, as uh, we monitor what's happening with the pandemic right here in our own community. Well, no bad news tonight. Let's let's follow only good news. So we'll open with Psalm 65, and I'm going to read. Uh, beginning with verse 4. Blessed are those you choose, O God, and bring near to live in your courts. We are filled with the good things of your house, of your holy temple. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as we gather on this Thanksgiving Eve, let's give thanks and praise to the Lord our God. And I invite you to do so by joining with me in this prayer of praise and adoration as we begin. You are the lamb at the center of our very existence, and the shepherd who guides us to the springs of the water of life. You are a God who wipes away every tear from our eyes and opens them to your splendor and care. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto you, our God, forever and ever. We bow down before the throne of your greatness and worship you now within your temple. Friends, let us give thanks and praise to the Lord our God as we sing hymn number 389, Let All Things Now Living, and we'll sing verses 1 and 2.
And to continue in our joyful worship, we begin first by uh, praying this unison prayer of confession that we may ask God to cleanse our hearts, to wrap us in the righteousness of Jesus Christ, that we may sit before his throne and listen to the good news. Join with me as we pray that prayer of confession. See, See what, what love the Lord has, has given us, that, that we should be called the children of God. God. Yet we so easily forsake our high calling. We make a mockery of God's greatness when we don't render ourselves thankful for all God's goodness and grace. We squander the bountiful assets God entrusts to us when we don't care for the gifts God provides. We turn our attention inward rather than humbly attending the throne of God's greatness, when we worship ourselves and proudly boast of our gains, forgive us, O Christ, and intercede for us. Friends, hear the good news of Jesus Christ, for which we give thanks. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. And I declare unto you, in the strong name of Jesus Christ, that your sins and my sins are forgiven. Know that you are forgiven. Be at peace and give thanks. Thanksgiving to you. I love Thanksgiving dinner. It's my one of my favorite, favorite dinners. Oh, I love seeing all that good food piled up and ready to eat. And I think cooking is kind of fun too. So that would be great. Thanksgiving is, of course, a national holiday. It's um, a, a holiday that's on our country's calendar, not just the church is celebrating Thanksgiving. Everyone, we hope, across the country is celebrating Thanksgiving. So it's really, really important. And we remember something. I think it's really important. Even though it's a national holiday, and more than just the church celebrates it, it's really all about God. Because those early uh, pilgrims, they were Puritans. They were Reformed Christians, just like we are. Uh, but they were so grateful that they wanted to give thanks to God. That's what it's really all about. So even though technically it's not a Christian holiday, I think it really is. It is all about giving thanks to God. That's what they were being thankful for. And that's what they were uh, praising God about for being with them and sustaining them and keeping them alive and providing for them and meeting their needs. It's something that we too can give thanks to God about because He's still God and He still loves us and He's still with us and He's still meeting our needs and He's still giving us all the things that we need. And so we have lots of things to give thankful for around us. Thanksgiving table tomorrow. We'll give thanks for family and friends and lots of great food and all that kind of good stuff. But above all things, we give thanks to God for Jesus and for being with us. Because we know that God is right here, moving and working and taking good care of us. And for that especially, we give thanks. Something that we can praise God for tomorrow. Shall we pray? Let's pray. God, thank you. Thank you for giving us thankful hearts, especially uh, tonight and tomorrow as we thank you and think about all the things that you 
you've done in our lives. All the blessings that you've given us. All the ways that we have felt cared for and warmed and loved and taken care of, God. We just thank you for these things. And uh, we just ask that you help us to give thanks, not only on Thanksgiving, but every single day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And I just thank so much in this basket right here. to listen to uh, the scriptures read. We pray that you silence in our heart anything that might distract us from your word. God, we pray that you open our ears to your voice. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Our first reading this evening is from the book of Deuteronomy. Reading you chapter 8, verses 7 through 18. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks, of water, of fountains and springs flowing out in the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land in whose stones are iron, and out of the hills you can dig copper, and you shall eat and be full, and you shall bless the Lord your God for the land he has given you. Take care, lest you forget the Lord your God, by not keeping his commandments and his rules and his statutes, which I have commanded you today. Lest when you have eaten and are full and have built good houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks multiply and your silver and gold is multiplied and all that you have is multiplied, then your heart be lifted up and you forget that the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrifying wilderness with its fiery serpents and scorpions and thirsty ground where there was no water, who brought you water out of a flinty rock, who led you in the wilderness with manna that your fathers did not know, that he might humble you and test you to do you good in the end. Beware, lest you say in your heart, my power and the might of my hand have gotten me this wealth. You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your fathers, as it is to this day. Amen. And our second reading is from the book of Luke. Up here I'm reading chapter 17. Verses 11 through 19. On the way to Jerusalem, he was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers, who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice, and he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, 
rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Amen. Amen. If one more person says to me, these are unprecedented times, I'm going to scream. These are unprecedented times, but the word is so overused, I don't think I can hear it being used one more time. And I think we're all beginning to feel some of the long-term effects of COVID-19. I think that the anxiety of this whole situation, of the whole pandemic, is beginning to warp our minds that everyone is on edge, or at least more on edge than usual. So are we really in the mood for Thanksgiving? I read an article from the November 22nd edition of the Beaver County Times by Charlotte Lombala, and the, the article was called, This Year It's No Thanks Day. Here's what she writes. She writes, so, Thanksgiving 2020, do we have anything to be thankful for anyone? I mean, I'm thankful I'm alive and relatively healthy and a few other cliched slash maudlin sentiments, but mostly I'm annoyed and resentful and out of patience. So I'm pondering a new holiday, No Thanks Day. And then she lists a few reasons for No Thanks Day. Just see if you can relate to any of these. She says, I'll start the festivities because, well, because our son, who lives in COVID City, USA, won't be coming home for the holiday. Our daughter's senior year of high school continues to be a bumpy mix of disappointments, piled on sadness, sprinkled with Zoom school. Disinfecting wipes are still impossible to find. I hate having yet another item of clothing to think about. Masks. Which one's the most comfortable? Is my favorite mask in the wash? Can you wear a leopard print mask with a polka dot shirt? There's a never-ending conflicting information from the so-called experts. I'm sick of ducking whenever I walk past my daughter's Zoom classes in the corner of her kitchen. At the same time, I worry that I'll slip and fall, go head over heels, and inadvertently fling the cat into the air, and somehow it'll all be captured on video, and I'll be forever known as cat-tossing Zoom mama, or some such thing. I'm nostalgic, she says. For the good old days, when our only goal was to flatten the curve. Mm. And after reading that article, as if I weren't depressed enough already, I look at the front page. On the front page of the Beaver County Times, on the same day, had this headline article. How to avoid family fights at Thanksgiving. <laughs> I think everyone is expecting this to be one heck of a Thanksgiving. It's going to be unprecedented. Well, it might be hard to muster up an authentically joyful Thanksgiving this year, given all of the things that are happening in our nation and in the world today. They are serious, and they are drastic, and times are trying, but maybe that's the very best time to give thanks. In our reading from the book of Deuteronomy, the people are given a solemn warning Deuteronomy promises that the people would very soon enter into the promised land. And after wandering in the arid desert for generations, they would soon finally have a home. And not just any home, God says. A home where there will be plenty. Deuteronomy says that there were going to be brooks of water. Something pretty nice to have out in the desert. And there will be fields of wheat and olive trees and honey and iron and copper. So that when they entered into these promised lands that God was going to give them, he wasn't only going to give them a place, you know, just to kind of meet their needs. God wasn't just going to give them a, a meager existence out there. No, there would be an abundance. There would be wealth and it would all be plentiful. 
This desert jewel that God had promised them would have plenty of food and plenty of water, but even luxurious and extravagant things like honey and olives and pomegranates and even the hills would contain great wealth like iron and copper. In short, they were going to have it pretty good. But there's a danger in having things so good. And that danger is that they might one day forget that the source of all of those good things, the source of all of those blessings, is God himself. Listen to that solemn warning again as it's translated this time in the message. It puts it in, in very plain English. I like this. Here's uh, verses 11 through 16 from the message. Make sure that you don't forget God, your God, by not keeping his commandments his rules and regulations that I command you today. Make sure that when you eat and are satisfied, build pleasant houses and settle in. See your herds and flocks flourish and more and more money come in. Watch your standard of living go up and up. Make sure that you don't become so full of yourself and your things that you forget God, your God, the God who delivered you from Egyptian slavery, the God who led you through that huge and fearsome wilderness, those desolate, arid badlands crawling with fiery snakes and scorpions, the God who gave you water gushing from hard rock, the God who gave you manna to eat in the wilderness, something your ancestors had never heard of, in order to give you a taste of the hard life, to test you so that you might be prepared to live well in the days ahead of you. You start thinking to yourselves, I did all this, and all by myself, I'm rich, it's all mine. Well, think again. Remember that God, your God, gave you the strength to produce all this wealth, so as to confirm the covenant that he promised to your ancestors, as it is today. The meaning from the book of Deuteronomy, from this passage, if I could just boil it down into one sentence, it would sound like, well, just like what Grandma used to say. Count your blessings, and don't forget where they come from. Because grandmas know a lot, don't they? Mm -hmm. We do live in a country where we have vast resources. You know, I think of these, these amazing, beautiful fields filled with wheat and barley and corn that stretch out as far as the eye could see out of the Midwest. Or our clean drinking water that is so plentiful it's used to water our lawns. I think of grocery store shelves piled high with goods. There's an abundance of wealth. But we've gotten too big for our riches when we forget that the source of all of these blessings is God Almighty. You see, giving thanks helps to keep us grounded. It helps to keep God in the center of all things and directly in front of us. Or consider those ten lepers healed by Jesus. They had leprosy, a, a terrible, terrible skin disease. The Old Testament gave very explicit rules and regulations on what you were supposed to do if you had leprosy. And in short, you had to live far, far away from people because it was contagious. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> yes, they had to live away. These, there were leper colonies. They lived lives in complete isolation. They could return back to the community unless they were certified by the local priests who would look at them to make sure that they were indeed you know, healed or that the illness had gone. So they lived pretty miserable lives. And in this reading, they are they're doing what it is they're supposed to do. They stay back from Jesus at a distance, probably more than six feet. And Jesus sees them, of course. He has compassion on them. He he. Tells them to go and show themselves to the priest. In other words, they are to fulfill the, the Old Testament regulation, the Old Testament law. That is, when your leprosy is gone, you need to go and show yourself to the priest. And he will certify you so that you can return back to the community of faith. And as they begin walking towards the priest, they become healed. And only one of them, only one of them stopped. And went back to Jesus. I love this. It's a beautiful passage. He falls down at Jesus' feet. And he worships the Lord Jesus. And he just gives thanks. 
His heart is so filled with gratitude, he can do nothing except fall at the feet of Jesus and give thanks. And Jesus, of course, commends him. This man was a Samaritan, Jesus says. I healed ten. Only one came back, and that man was a Samaritan. Samaritans were enemies of the Jewish people. And yet he came back, and he gave thanks. Thanksgiving is the very center of what we believe. You know, I talked with, I was talking with Wendy Flegel this morning, and uh, we were chatting on the phone. And uh, she reminded me of something that I had completely forgotten. This must have been close to 15 years ago. It gives you any idea of the time frame. Kemp was still in a, a baby seat, in a car seat. And Wendy reminded me that there was a time when uh, she was still working. She was working as the township secretary. And uh, this lady called her out of the blue. And she said, Wendy, I want to give a Thanksgiving meal to someone. I don't know who, I don't know who to give it to. And I was hoping that, that you might know someone that I could give this Thanksgiving meal to. And it's really important to me. I, I want to do this because, she says, years ago, there were times in my life when I wouldn't have had a Thanksgiving meal if someone hadn't have blessed me with it. And God would provide, out of the blue, somebody would give me a turkey, some goods, and I could have a meal. And if it were not for them, I would have had nothing that year. She says to Wendy, I want to do this for someone because I'm okay now. I'm doing well. I'm healthy. I'm stable. And I'm able to, to buy a meal and be a blessing to someone else. Do you know someone? And Wendy says, I'll call my pastor. Wendy called me up. She said, what do you think? I said, oh, yeah, I know someone. I know someone that would love to have this gift. So I went over, and this was kind of funny, but a little bit gross. Wendy said, you remember, you remember you came over in your car to pick up the Thanksgiving box, and you didn't want the turkey to slide it all over the place, so you put it in Kemp's car seat and buckled it in, and you said not to worry about the turkey, it'd be just fine. I thought to myself, how do I put down some plastic? Because a thawing turkey in the car seat was probably not a good idea in hindsight, but generally speaking, it turned out just fine. We were able to do that because her heart was moved by thanks. This lady wanted to be a blessing to others. She was thankful for how she had been cared for and wanted to care for others. And I think that is the beginning of our festival of first fruits. I think from that, from that year, the next year, we began putting together Thanksgiving boxes, and this year, we gave away 10. Uh, if I could, I would pile all the whole church family into the van, and we would all ride around, and we would deliver them together. And you could see how grateful folks were, how they are, how, how beautiful it is to be able to pray, to, to see happy tears of joy. And I'm pretty sure it began that year. With someone whose heart was moved by thanks. Amen. Beautiful. You see, giving thanks, giving thanks is behind everything that we do. Thanksgiving may be a national holiday, as I told our young disciples, but Christians have a different perspective. We are always thankful people, even in times of adversity. And I would say, especially during times of adversity. With this pandemic, going on and on and on into eternity. I think this is the very best time to give thanks. This is the very best time to take an inventory of all of the things we have to be thankful for and to remember that these are all gifts from God. So let's remember the blessings of family and friends, of work for our hands to do, for the warmth of love, for men and women who grow food and produce goods, for those who transport them from the source to the marketplace. For the freedom that we enjoy in this great nation. And the list goes on and on and on. But above all things, above all things, let's give thanks to God for Jesus Christ. Who adopts us into the family of God. For we have the privilege of calling one another brothers and sisters in Christ, and we can call God Almighty, 
Father. That's no small miracle, friends. The same God who has saved us from our own sins and has promised to resurrect us to eternal life, if that doesn't inspire thanks, this Thanksgiving, nothing will. 2020 has been rough. I know. But let us never cease to remember the blessings that God still lavishes upon his people. For now is the best time to give thanks. So, Mrs. Lotbala, with respect to no thanks day, I sympathize with your sentiments. But no thanks. It's Thanksgiving. Let us give thanks, friends. God bless you. Our hymn is number 365, my tribute. Let's sing it with thanksgiving. even as we confess our faith, say in the use of the Apostles' Creed, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the 
the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Friends, rather than joys and concerns tonight, this is a season of thanks. So I'll ask if you have anything that you'd like to give thanks for tonight. I'll start by saying I give thanks for the joy of this church family, for your love, and for your support, and uh, just for the opportunity to serve you. Yes, Sarah? I'm thankful for being able to have fellowship with other people. Sarah is thankful to have fellowship with other folks, even during all this pandemic mess. Amen. Anyone else like to share your thanks? Diane? I'm thankful that we still have fall to mom to live on for once. Amen. We are, we are rejoicing with you, for you are thankful that we still have Bob's mom with us. Caroline? I'm thankful that I get to go to school. Uh, Caroline is thankful to be able to get to go to school. That's awesome. And if you're streaming at home, feel free to post your, your Thanksgivings as well. Anyone else? Uh, we'll start with Fanny. Thank you, Deb, for giving thanks for family, friends, and for co-workers that are willing to, to talk and share, and uh, for the, the joy to see all these patriots around. And I should, I, Fanny, I should repeat what you said so that the folks at home can hear, otherwise um, they'll wonder. And Fanny, you were giving thanks for uh, God being an awesome God and for his presence, uh, even in times of grief. And uh, and by giving thanks also for family and being surrounded by such wonderful people that we love. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, you're right. You cannot look in the world and think all of this happened by accident or it's man-made. Um, that sounds a little bit like we were studying Romans, right? That's what Paul's saying. We look around and we can just see by the com complexity of the universe uh, that God has created all of this. Amen. Praise God for that. Anyone else? I'm sure.
Sharon, we give thanks for you, and thank you for sharing, uh, you know, your thanks for the Lord Jesus Christ, and for his presence in your life, and, and during this pandemic, and for the blessing of your family. Amen. Mary, you have one thing? I just want to um, give thanks for our military. I, I think we take for granted that every single one of those personnel chooses to serve our country voluntarily. And I don't ever want to take that for granted as a patriot myself. Um, so I just want to give thanks for them and their willingness to, to serve us. Um, and I also just want to give thanks for those that will have to work tomorrow, that will have to still be on the front lines, fire departments and, you know, rescue squads and, and of course, health professionals and many, many others um, that will still have to work tomorrow. I just want to give thanks for them. Amen. Thank you. And uh, yes, indeed, and we... Give thanks also, as you have said, uh, um, for our military and for their families and for those that are working tomorrow will be on the front lines uh, in many different fields, but still providing for, for people. <coughs> Praise God. Anyone else? Cal? As always, thank you for my family, but then also just kind of, I guess, threading the needle between the weather and the pandemic and everything like that and just having a solid year, looking around at so many people that had a real tough year. So. Indeed. God for family and for his presence and for a good year. Sharon? Just thankful that we can sit here and we can worship Christ. Not worry about anybody you know, hurting us or anything like that. Thank you for that. Amen. What a joy it is indeed to be able to be here and worship without fear of persecution. Something we should never take for granted. Anyone else? Shall we pray together and give thanks together? Friends, let's pray. Almighty and eternal God, our hearts are overflowing with thanks and with gratitude. Oh God, we praise you for the, the many blessings of this life. God, those things which are, are evident to us, uh, we give you thanks for them, for those, those things that we've mentioned today, for the gift of faith. God, for the joy and love of family and friends for the work that you've given us to do. Lord, we thank you for your provision of grace and for your presence in, in times of grief and in times of adversity. Lord, we thank you that we don't have to face uh, anything alone. We don't have to go through life alone because we are never alone. We have you, O oh God. We have your powerful Holy Spirit living within us, working all around. Oh God, indeed, we thank you for this nation's military, for those who have served. And we thank you for their families who also have sacrificed much. God, we pray for those that are celebrating Thanksgiving tomorrow away from their family and friends, for military personnel stationed in faraway places. For those that are working here close to home to provide important services, Lord, we give you thanks for them. We ask your blessing on them. God, we give you thanks for those things which are not clear to us or perhaps those things which we may take for granted or not notice. Help us, oh God, to search our hearts, to take an inventory of the blessings that you have lavish upon us so fully and so completely that we may give you thanks for all things. Oh God, we simply praise you. We worship you. We glorify you. God, we adore you for you are our God and we are your people. You have revealed your amazing love for us in Jesus Christ, who once more we say is our Lord, our Savior, Master of our lives. We thank you for the great love that Christ has revealed, your love. And we thank you for the ways that you are moving and working and shaping us, making us more and more into the image of your Son, our Savior. Oh God, 
may our hearts overflow this day and every day. Even as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, let us continue to give thanks as we bring to God his offering. Closing him is number 377, verses 1 and 2 of Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee.
friends as we go back out into the world. And this Thanksgiving evening, go with the love of God, overflowing in your hearts. Go with gratitude and thanksgiving overflowing in your hearts. And go rejoicing and giving thanks to God Almighty tonight, tomorrow, and every day that the Lord gives us breath until we are in his presence and we can thank him personally. And friends, go with God's blessing. Now may the rose rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rain fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold each of you in the palm of his hand.